We begin tonight with the growing number of earthquake re-repairs in Christchurch. Last night, Checkpoint producer Michelle Cook received an answer to an Official Information Act request on the number of unresolved EQC claims in our second largest city. This is seven years after the major earthquake, which is why we asked. 48% of unresolved claims, that's 1,273 properties in total, are for re-repairs. And EQC has also told us that during 2017, they received 8,356 callback requests for remedial damage. The unresolved claims for re-repairs means work has been done. EQC using public money has gone into damaged homes, done assessments and repair work. But that work was either unsatisfactory, disputed, incomplete or had missed damage, often to foundations. And that means EQC now has to go back, in some cases, seven years on, to do much more significant work than was originally done. And a lawyer representing Christchurch homeowners told Checkpoint today the figure EQC gave us is just the tip of the iceberg. Look, I don't want to be alarmist, but I think uh, there's probably thousands of homes in Christchurch that haven't been assessed properly or repaired properly. That's Peter Woods from law firm Anthony Harper, who's acting for homeowners claiming the EQC repairs they received and in many cases believed were complete, weren't up to scratch. Yes, we will have represented over 200 and I'm getting one to two calls a day at the moment. Seven years and six days after the most damaging earthquake, Peter Woods is getting one or two calls a day. And what are those calls saying? Uh, the classic situation is they say, look, I'm concerned that EQC didn't assess the earthquake damage to our property properly. Uh, and when the Fletcher EQR people turned up to repair it, they didn't repair it properly either. Yeah, they glued up the outside of the foundations with some glue. That's Jacqueline Tither, whose home was repaired by Fletcher's for EQC in 2011. You have had some cosmetic work done. I have. As so many people have in Canterbury. And for many, that will be the end of the story. But for others, an unknown number, but growing, cosmetic wasn't enough. I think that EQC was not assessing and repairing to the correct standards. And like many of the people we've spoken to, the problems appear to arise from the initial assessments or scopes. The assessments were done by unqualified people to the wrong standards. That's obviously not true in all cases. Many people are settled fully and finally and have moved on. But Peter Woods, the lawyer we began with, who said... There's probably thousands of homes in Christchurch that haven't been assessed properly or repaired properly. ...believes we don't yet know how many people are in that position because many of them don't yet know themselves. They are the people who are contacting him now, seven years on, at the rate we discussed before. One to two a day. Yes. And it is... Uh, and I should say, we're not advertising for that. Uh, it's just uh, a greater awareness of the extent of the problem. Seven years after the major February quake. That's right. Do you see recurring features? When people call you, what is the thing they're most likely to identify as needing re-repair? The big issue is the foundations. Which was Jacqueline's problem. Yeah, they glued up the outside of the foundations with some glue and put some concrete over them and painted over them. But basically, the December quake reopened those cracks in exactly the same places. So I've got photos of before taken by EQC, and then photos of after. Same spot, so it was really cosmetic. In other words, the repairs satisfied the uneducated eye, but weren't structurally complete. Post-2011, the house was shaking around pretty badly, and EQC came and did their inspections. This is David Townsend, who knew nothing about earthquakes and damage, and deferred to EQC's expertise. So... They came in and Fletcher's um, had a contract that happened to be a painting and decorating company come in and do the repairs to the house. He thought things had been sorted. It looked like they had. When I looked into it further, they had never assessed or 
or even looked at structural damage. So David Townsend hired his own engineers to assess the structural damage and went back to EQC. They pulled their act together and they got a good team in front of me and said, well, OK, we do agree that we missed this. We do agree that we have repaired it cosmetically and not structurally. And they wouldn't put that in writing, but what they did certainly admitted that they, they accepted the damage at that, in 2016. Victory. But because the initial scope had identified cosmetic repairs costing less than a hundred grand, the long and the short of it is, they then said, "Well, okay, your claim's over cap now," and this is back in now July last year, 2017, and they've thrown it onto Southern Response. David Townsend drove the process himself. The floor wasn't level; it had been level before the earthquakes. But Peter Wood says the people contacting him often find out through a third party. Particularly when they come in to sell their house and you know there's a, a pre-purchase inspection and, and that inspection report says, well, the foundations are, are stuffed. Um, and the homeowner says, well, hold on, that's supposed to be fixed by EQC. And then it gets them into an uh, investigation as to what has gone on. And the difference between what was repaired and what needed to be repaired, well... Sometimes it's striking. I could give you an example of a case we settled yesterday. Originally, EQC assessed the damage and they did about $50,000 worth of repairs to the house, mainly cosmetic. Well, in fact, all cosmetic, as it turns out. Uh, we got that over cap last year uh, and the insurer has paid out on a full replacement basis for a new house. How much money are we talking about? 600000 and the original was... 50. How many such cases are there? No one knows. EQC's response to our Official Information Act request states there are 1,273 claims before them for re-repairs. But in the same response, the Earthquake Commission tells us... As EQC settlements are not full and final, we continue to receive callback requests for remedial damage. During 2017, we received 8,356 requests. Some of this work is so major, it does seem bewildering that it's only happening now. Michelle also had cosmetic work done under EQC. Like David, she's now found herself being transferred from EQC to Southern Response. And the work her home needs? The lift of our house, what's called a high lift, it will be lifted three metres in the year while they start from scratch, dig right down underneath, remediate the land as best they can, rebuild the entire foundation, including foundation ring and piles, and basically start again. Peter Woods, as you heard earlier, fears there are thousands of cases where work hasn't been done or was done inadequately. And like Michelle's, the claims he's handling aren't small. So far, I think all of the claims we've put to EQC for reassessment have ended up going over cap. All of them? All of them. And remember... Peter Woods is getting one or two new cases a day. Oh, it's a s systemic problem. Uh, that I'm a very strong supporter of an inquiry into EQC. We need to know why this has gone so badly wrong uh, and make sure it can't happen again. That's lawyer Peter Woods.